label that I use. I prefer to just say that I'm on the autism spectrum. When I was diagnosed, my doctor explained to me that I would be considered to have Asperger's, but it was removed from the most recent edition of the DSM, which at this moment is the DSM-5, which some people believe was an act of ableism because it meant that some people who are diagnosed with Asperger's were no longer considered to have autism, so their insurance wasn't covering any of their therapy anymore and stuff like that. Given my own personal experience with the term Asperger's, I don't really use it, and the reason is that it's been almost like a gatekeeping term for me. In my experience with medical professionals, when they hear the term Asperger's, it's almost as if they expect you to be really rude. I, I, don't, I don't know why. <laughs> it's been more than one doctor and more than one therapist who, when I tell them that I have Asperger's instead of just saying I'm on the autism spectrum, have turned to me and been like, you? No, you don't have Asperger's. You're so polite. You're so nice. If you had Asperger's, you'd come in here and you'd be insulting me. And I'm like, what? I had one psychologist say, you can't have Asperger's because if you did, you would be sitting here talking about your train collection and you've just been quiet this whole time. And I'm like, I I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I must have missed that part in the DSM about the train collections. Like, can you get more stereotypical? So, um, yeah, the reason why I personally don't like to use the term Asperger's is just because I feel like when people hear Asperger's, they... You're rude. My cat has Asperger's. I feel like when people hear the term Asperger's, they automatically think that that means that you're rude. I, I don't, or that you, you don't have a filter and you don't, I, I don't know. I don't even know what people think when they hear that, but I definitely have noticed that although autism in general is stigmatized, the term Asperger is particularly stigmatized, or at least that has been my experience. So I prefer to say I'm on the autism spectrum or that I'm, I am autistic because I just feel like it's more general and it has people jumping to less conclusions when that's something that they're first finding out about me. So now, let's move on to the pros and cons. My personal pros and cons in my experience of having autism. So the funny thing about this is that I noticed while I was making my list that a lot of my pros are cons and a lot of my cons are pros. There's kind of like an overlap, so it's not really a clear divide, at least it isn't in my mind. So my first pro and con would be absorbing information. And what I mean by that is the pro would be my ability to absorb a ton of information and retain it over long periods of time. When I learn things, I can't just learn like the top layer. I need to understand the roots. So I need to understand why things are the way that they are and how they became that way. I need the history. I need to link it to other things that I already understand. And because that's the way that I learn, it means that I really understand the things that I'm learning. But it also means because that is the way that I learn, I oftentimes don't get to learn things. In school, I struggle. It's just everything is so timed and sectioned. And I don't know, it's just for some reason, school is not the environment for me. My second pro and con would be my ability to think critically, I guess. What I mean by that is I see things really objectively and really logically, which would make it seem like I don't understand emotions and I'm detached from emotions, which is not at all the case. My, my particular favorite thing and the thing that I'm studying is psychology. I love psychology. I think that it's fascinating and I really do understand it and I'm quite good at it. But it's because there is a lot of logic in psychology and you could apply logic to understand people's emotions and to understand other people's perspectives, I guess. So that's that would be a pro that used to be a con for me. I used to have difficulty with a lot of my relationships with people because given the fact that I see things so logically and I retained so many small details and all this information, growing up I always really thought that I knew best. I thought that I was always right. And I'm not going to blame my autism for my shortcomings. I'm just thinking all of these past things, like my ability to be really logical and see things really objectively and think really critically and absorb all of these small details and hold so many facts, I feel like that makes it an actual nightmare to argue with me. Most times I am quite passive by nature. If it's not worth fighting about, I won't fight and I'll just be like, yeah, sure, you're right because I actually don't care. I don't have the time to fight over petty details. But if it's something that I am passionate about or if someone is particularly targeting me and talking to me about something or is upset with me and I'm like, well, here are the details, it became really difficult for me to maintain relationships because it was as if I thought I could never be wrong because I just, I make so much sense and I have all this logic, but 
the thing is I, I needed to also acknowledge the fact that I'm flawed and although I'm logical, you are also able to sometimes look at things from another person's perspective and apply logic and understand why they're seeing things the way that they are and understand that what's logical to you is not going to be logical to someone else. Logic is really subjective sometimes, so that's helped me. And when I don't understand where someone else is coming from, I will ask them. I will ask them the questions that I have. If I don't understand something, I'm not going to just rebuttal by being stubborn. I'm going to just, you know, ask, well, why do you feel this way? Have you considered this? Well, what about this other thing? And then my next frustration is that other people's brains don't work exactly the way that mine does. So even if I do ask those questions, I'm not always given answers that satisfy me. Oftentimes, if I'm in an argument with someone, I'm going to be met with a lot of really emotionally charged responses. So, well, this is how I feel, and it made me feel like that, and what about these feelings? And I'm like, but that's not what I asked. What, what about all these facts? But I've just realized that that is why I, I guess I used to come off as insensitive. I guess maybe that's where the whole idea behind people with Asperger's being rude comes from. I don't know. I, I still don't encourage the stereotype. And again, it doesn't mean that we are incapable of change. Emotional maturity is something that we can all achieve with work. So I've learned to just accept that sometimes people won't see things the way that you do, and you won't see things the way that someone else does. And sometimes the best thing to do is just, you know, accept that you won't agree and find a compromise. And, you know, compromising is okay. My next point of my pro kind of goes with the other two, like learning and logic. And I've been told that this is an autism thing, but it would be my natural inclination toward music and art and just being able to understand how to play most instruments, even without being taught. I feel like this whole video is gonna come off really arrogantly, it's not meant to. I'm grateful for the fact that since I was very young, I've just, I've been able to play most instruments that have been presented to me, and we had a lot of instruments lying around the house because my dad was a music teacher, and then that makes it sound like, well, you could play all these instruments because your dad taught you. Uh, he did not. But that is not something that happened. Actually, the instrument that I'm the best at playing is the one that my dad has the most difficulty with, which is guitar. I'm self-taught on every instrument that I ever learned how to play. But that's something, you know, I've been told that it's an autism thing to just be good at music and to just understand that. It makes it seem like it's like, oh, it's because you're artsy, but not really. There's a lot of logic to music and to drawing and art and proportions. It's just, I look at things really logically and almost not artistically, and yet that makes me artistic. I don't know, I'm very confused about that. Composition, whether it be musical composition or visual composition, makes sense. It just, it just makes sense. It's mathematical. Music has rhythm. Rhythm is math. It's numbers. Composition, you divide things into quadrants. It's just, you divide things into thirds. It, I, I can't explain, but like, there's a logic to it. And because I'm so good with numbers and I'm so good with patterns and music and art both involve numbers and patterns and that's how you make something appealing to someone whether it be the ear or the eye i've always been good at them because of that so oddly enough my logic thinking brain number loving pattern loving brain has rendered me more gifted at music and art so that's been a pro for me the next con that i could think of is uh, my sensory processing disorder everything feels like it's too much for me oftentimes lights will be too bright sounds will be too loud sensations will just be too much for me. Being touched, it's almost never the right time to touch me. And don't worry if you meet me somewhere in public and you want to hug me, that's fine. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like when people are just like especially intimate sort of touches, like a partner trying to like lightly stroke you, that 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 makes me want to crawl out of my body. So that's been difficult because people sometimes take it the wrong way if I don't want to be touched at all, if I don't want to be spoken to, if I don't want to look at something at that moment or listen to a song at that moment or you get what I'm saying, it's like it's just sometimes I just need to turn off my senses and have nothing and people will take that seriously like oh you're not interested in what I have to show you, you're not interested in what I have to say, you don't want me to touch you and it's like it's, it's not that, it's not any of that, it's just it's all too much and I would like to save that energy. <laughs> so that's been a con for me but it doesn't mean that you can't work around it and I do acknowledge that that in itself could be a pro and some of those sensitivities might be the reason why I'm so artistically inclined, artistically inclined, autistically inclined. You get it? I see, 
conspiracy. So maybe the reason why I'm so sensitive to music and what sounds good and pitch, and I'm so sensitive to images and color and composition could have to do with my sensory processing disorder, with the fact that I'm perceiving most stimulation in a way that's really amplified compared to what it should be. So it's a con, but it could also be a pro. And I think that's it. The last thing I could think of in terms of a con would be that I'm really set in my ways. I have trouble um, changing my routines or when something is done differently, it's difficult for me, but it's not all the time. The thing is, if someone is able to offer me a routine that is more efficient, or if someone is going to do something and their method is more efficient, then I'm okay with it. But this goes back to the whole, because I'm so logical and I think about things so objectively, I always think that I'm right. It makes it that when I see someone executing a task, I, I could already predict what may go wrong with it. And that might be anxiety, it might be an autism thing, I don't know, but because I can't help but try to always be as logical as possible and do things as efficiently as possible, it'll be really frustrating to me when something is just off because I know how it should be. But again, I correct myself and I'm sort of like, you know, let people live their lives. You're not, you're not here to live everyone else's life. And if someone is doing something in your environment that you don't like, you could just tell them that, like you could just communicate that to them and then maybe you'll be in charge of doing that thing or I don't know, compromise. Compromise and communicate. That's my biggest piece of advice. So that's all. Those are just some thoughts on autism and some things about me and my autism. Let me know if you have any questions, if there's anything else you'd like me to cover, if there's anything you'd like me to go more in depth with. And hopefully you like this video. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. And I hope you have a great day and a great week and take care of yourselves. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.